In this video we get to talk to someone called Outlook the Rapper. He managed to leverage a song that only had about 1,700 streams into playing a festival show in Cuba for over 6,000 people. He's also managed to play a bunch of other cool shows opening for pretty big artists, and he's managed to grow a following on TikTok that gets him over 100,000 views per month. So he has a lot of awesome stuff that he talks about in this video. This episode is also going to be available on the brand new Modern Music Marketing Podcast, which you can find links to check out below if you prefer the audio format. Anyways, I think you'll enjoy this video very much. Enjoy. Let everyone know on my channel who you are and what you got going on in your life. Hey, hey what's up, guys? I'm out with The Rapper. I'm a musician out of Portland, Oregon. Been making music for a couple of years here. i uh, been going super hard on TikTok, so go follow me on TikTok, out with The Rapper, and yeah, man, been checking out Andrew's content. He's got a lot of really super helpful stuff on this channel. It's been a game changer. Yeah, thanks, man. So, so one of the one of the cool things that you know I, I learned about you, and we've we only known each other for like a couple of weeks now, um, mm -hmm. is that you you did a a show in front of a good amount of people with yeah. a pretty small initial initial following. There's a cool story about that, so I'm just gonna kind of let you yeah. dive into that. Yeah, so I'm sure like a lot of you, right, like when you first gotten started in this, you're like, man, how could I play a show? Like that, that was something that was super exciting to me. And I remember, you know, you know, in college having a lot of friends playing house shows. I'm like, man, how do I play a house show? Like that would be crazy. Like that was the goal for me, yeah. right? And that seems super hard to attain until I did, you know what I mean? And what I started to notice as I progressed is, you know, there's this – evolution that comes in this game it's, it's it's really it feels like i'm playing a video game you know what i mean like you know when i started it was really hard to just get like one of those gigs and then i learned well maybe like i should make an excel spreadsheet of like a hundred venues and just go hit them up and see what happens and i hit up like a hundred venues and i got one gig at like a little rusty bar down the street and it was like, the, and like nine people showed up, you know, but for me, it was exciting because it was like, that felt like progress to me. Right. You know, and then from there, I thought like, all right, well, that didn't really work that well. Like, I, I mean, artists seem to be playing shows. What if I, you know, interact with artists? Maybe they can, you know, help me find something. And as I started to talk to more artists, you know, I was able to line up a couple shows. And at one of those shows, I met this artist and he was telling me about how he was able to open up for a couple thousand people, like opening up for some big artists. And I was like, oh, well, how do you do that? And he's like, here's the key, man. Like, you can't be hitting up these venues. Like, they, they want to know that you can sell that place out. So if you're trying to build an audience, the first people you need to be hitting up is the actual promoters because they're the mm. ones throwing the shows, right? right? So you have a lot of promoters. Like, for example, I opened up for Riff Rap. So um, this guy ended up introducing me to this promoter who got me a gig opening up for Riff Rap. I paid a couple hundred dollars to get the spot. And in return, I got 20 tickets that were each $20. So if I sold all those tickets, I could make my money back. Yeah. And all of a sudden, I went being like, all right, I remember not even being able to figure out how to get a show until, you know, now all of a sudden, like, I'm open up for Riff Raff. Like, <laughs> this is crazy. And, um, and at the same time, I ended up releasing a project. And, you know, it was my first project I ever released. I had no idea what I was doing. And you know, since I didn't know what I was doing, it, obviously it flopped. And yeah. for me, that was crazy because I was like, what? The music's really good. Like, shouldn't it be, you know, killing it? But, you know, I'm sure, as you know, like having good music's really only about like 20 percent of this equation, it feels like. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, here's what's crazy. It just happens that one of those I had a song that had 1700 views and it just happens that one of those 1700 views was this guy in Havana, Cuba. And this guy happened to be friends with these DJs, this DJ group that goes by the name of House Republic. And they heard my song and they really liked it. So they, you know, just DM'd me on Instagram. They're like, hey, we really like, you know, your song. Like, we would love to collab with you. And I was like, of course. Yeah. And you know, I ended up collabing on a song with them, you know, a couple months later, you know, they released their project and they ended up getting nominated for like a Cuban Music Award. Wow. And all of a sudden I have a song on like an award-winning album f all from a song that only had 1700 views that led to that opportunity and then you know I was talking I was like oh this is really cool like maybe we should try and figure out how to film a music video and they're like yeah man if you can ever make it to Cuba like go for it and so I was like I'm down like this is the exact <laughs> type of opportunities I was looking for 
And so, you know, next thing you know, I'm like, I, I'm like scrolling through their Instagram. I'm like, huh, these guys have actually played some pretty big shows. This is kind of cool. And it turns out they lined up um, like the headlining spot at this great, basically the biggest electronic music festival in Cuba. And I, I had no idea how big the festival was until I actually showed up to Cuba. So, you know, I, I, I mentioned to them like, oh, hey, are, like you playing any shows? Like maybe I could come and, you know, film the music video around that time. And, you know, they're like, oh, yeah, we're actually playing this festival. And, you know, they're super nonchalant about it. I was like, <laughs> no cool. big deal. Just a just a festival, you know. Yeah, I, it could it could have been in, tw- in front of 20 people and I would have been stoked. Right. You know, like just having an opportunity in like another country and to film a music video. Like I would have gone for the music video alone. Yeah. And so, you know, next thing I know I'm on like a plane to Cuba and, you know, comes day, you know, we film the music video, everything goes amazing. And then it goes time to go to the show. And like, we show up to this venue and like, I have some videos on my channel showing it. And like, if you look in the sound check, like they, it's actually under this like bridge in like, da- in like downtown Havana. And like the way they had to get it off, it looked like there was maybe going to be like a thousand people there. Wow. And comes night of the show, we show up, it's over 6,000 people. And it was just mind blowing. Cause I'm like, and we ended up performing the song that these guys found me from. I performed it on stage, taking into account this song only had like 1700 views. I was performing it in stage in front of 6,000 people. <laughs> I mean, like I was performing in front of way more people than had ever even streamed the song. Yeah. And what it made me realize is, you know, especially when you're trying to get, you know, your feet under you and really establish yourself, establish yourself in this industry, you know, it's less about how many people are seeing your music and more about who's seeing it. So right. as we, you know, ex, you know, obviously we're trying to build this to a point where it's super profitable and we can make a lot of money and that's the game we're playing. But understand that, you know, even if you're not at that point yet, there's still a ton of opportunities out there. For example, you know, like I was saying, how you can hit up these promoters and get these shows. Like, if you're willing to drop some money, like, you know, I was able to open up for Waka Flocka. I was able to open up for Joyner Lucas. Like, (laughs) these are like artists that, like, I look up to. You know what I mean? And, like, I guarantee you none of those guys have any idea who I am. But to me, it doesn't matter because to me, that's that's a stepping stone showing I'm in the right direction. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I look at my big goals I'm shooting for now, you know, actually selling out my own shows. And what keeps me really pushing through the hard times is remembering back when I thought playing a gig in front of 10 people was like the ultimate challenge. <laughs> and I just know, like, as you keep progressing, it's like you're playing a video game. You know what I mean? Like when you play yeah. level one, you're not going to do very good the first time you play it. But once you're on level 40, you look back and you're like, oh, level one was easy. But you're still scared of level 100. You know what I mean? You're like, I don't know oh, how yeah. to beat that level. Yeah. And and so so when I was talking, I, I forget exactly who I was I was talking to, but they mentioned that, you know, while there are a lot of people running kind of like scammy shows that like will charge artists to play, there's actually a lot of good opportunities for people to pay to get on an opening slot in like a tour or a big festival or a show. Yeah. Because if like, let's say you pay a couple grand even to, to book Mm -hmm. like a festival or something, you might play over the course of that, that festival, that tour to like 20,000, 30,000 people who are essentially the most intense music fans of the artist you're opening up for, which for you means it's like the fastest way to get hardcore fans. And, the, the cool thing about your story is you have that experience leveraging that uh, show world. Whereas like for me, like I did shows when I was like a teenager in my rock band, but um, I haven't done any like in the since I've actually taken music seriously. And I've noticed there's a lot of parallels to be to be drawn with the show world, like where you're you're you find the right person at the right time, which is kind of mm-hmm. the same way like you're networking with people and you find an opportunity and, you know, one saying that you probably heard is that opportunity is just a combination of luck and preparation. So you okay. only had a relatively small amount of streams, but just because the right person saw it, that was the luck part. The preparation is you're the type of person who's willing to, to take advantage of that opportunity and you already had songs ready to perform. 
Oh, yeah. And, you know, I think one thing that is really important to understand uh, is I heard this quote is by this guy named Zig Ziglar. And he's talking about like, if you can help someone get what they want, you can have yeah. anything you want. Right. So what I'm what I'm really learning right now, and this can show even through something as simple as this podcast we're doing, is whenever I see someone that I'm like, man, it would be cool to work with them. Instead of just letting that thought escape my head, I immediately figure out what can I give that person that they need? Yeah. You know what I mean? And that works with shows, promoters. What do they need? Well, they just invested 30 grand for a big artist to come play a show right. and they need to sell that venue out and make their money back. Yeah. So now as artists, we can think, well, how can we gain that leverage? Well, for example, something like building an email list or a phone list, you know, like if you know, if you have a, you know, target, let's say, for example, I live in Portland, let's say I, you know, built the asset of building a thousand emails, you know, email list in Portland. If I can go approach a promoter and be like, Hey, I know you're trying to sell out this venue. And like, you know, in his head, he's thinking, wow, this place is only 60% packed right now. Like, how am I going to sell the 40% of tickets left? And I could go in and be like, hey, I have a list of a thousand people. Let me open up for you and you yeah. can get access to that list. Right. You know, all of a sudden, now you start providing leverage or something as simple as, you know, the conversation we're having now. Like, I try to figure out, like, what can I give to you that makes you care enough to want to give something back? You know, this is right. a. It, this is a relationship. It's like a bank account, right? Like I can't yeah. expect to draw anything if I'm not also giving something in return. Right. And, and I mean, that, that's kind of the, I mean, for everyone watching won't know this, but the, essentially the way we, we met is that you had a, a, essentially built up some relationships and, and through yourself, a following in on TikTok. And you're like, mm -hmm. yo, you have all this knowledge about ads and we're doing well on TikTok like let's chat you know and that's to to me like that's a much better offer than someone just saying like hey can you help me with ads where like i do help a lot of people with ads obviously but the fact that mm -hmm. when you initially like just said hey man like i like what you're doing and like i'd love to learn from you but i think i can give you some stuff to learn like that's a pretty sweet deal and i i do that was that that's everything you know anyone yeah. that's serious about this knows how valuable their time is so if you expect someone else to give them your time unless that person that if that person is someone that is truly valuable offering legit value like they value their time so much because they only have so much to give so if you expect to come in they don't even know you and you're just like hey give 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 like yeah it's going to be a different scenario you know what i mean or as uh, as gary v says jab 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 right hook right <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like he, he says it perfectly. You know what I mean? And he's right. And you see how that has worked out for him. Yeah. You know and and I, mean? I, I have a friend of mine who's, who's coming to this channel a bit. And I think I'm doing a podcast with, with him. I think it'll be out before this one. But uh, my friend, Big Jer. And, you know, he originally hit me up. I think originally he was like asking, like, hey, can you check out my song? And it was just like, that was it. And he was like trying to get people <laughs> to check out his song. And then later on, he hit me up and was like, I'm looking for a vocalist. Like I, I, I make music and I think your voice, like we could work on some stuff. And, you know, a couple of years later, we, we chat every week. We do a video chat. We talk like every awesome. day on Facebook messenger. And it's a sweet deal because, you know, I, we have a good exchange of, aside from just being friends now, but I, we have a good exchange of value where I teach him what I know about music marketing and I help him with the mm -hmm. ads and he does like mixing professionally. So, He's able nice. to give me a lot of advice and feedback and he mixed one of my songs and I've helped him get ads set up. And it's personally for me, I found almost every, every like bigger, I don't know how to phrase this, but every like little leg up I get in life, it's usually due from trading value with people. And whether that value is money or an exchange of services, um, it's like relationships and collaboration and, and providing value is like the most useful thing in the world. Well, are you familiar with like the 80, 20 rule? What is it? 80% uh, of your it's business like, comes from 20% of your customers or one of the other versions? Yeah. 80% of your results come from 20% of the work, right? Yeah. There's so many things you're doing TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, networking, mixing, mastering, practicing. Like it's, it's this constant, 
like analyzation of like, where's my time best spent? And I'd say one of the things I've identified that has made the quickest impact is networking. Yeah, You're one connection away from everything changing, yeah. right? If I can hit up someone like you and you can help me optimize my ads and the next thing I know those ads are making me more money than I'm spending, now I, I just accomplished my dream. Right, exactly. You know what I mean? Like that's so powerful. And I see it, you know, I'm really just getting started. Like I'm not sitting here trying to pretend like I've made it at all, but I've had enough success, like trying to go what I, I've been going after in this industry that I know it's possible. Yeah. I've tasted enough. Anyone can do this. It's just, what are you willing to sacrifice to get it? Are you willing to work all day? Like, do you really love it? Like, and I think, you know, for me, like, what really shifted for me was, you know, shifting, you know, I really had to ask myself why I was doing this. You know what I mean? I think when I first started, it was cause I was insecure and I saw this as a way to, you know, impress people. And then I, you know, started telling people, Hey, I played a gig in front of 6,000 people. And they'd be like, Oh, that's cool. And I'm like, fuck you. That's cool. What? Like I just play like this is crazy. And like, you realize it's like, dude, everyone cares about themselves. They're so worried about their own life. They're not worried about what you're doing. You know what I mean? So oh, yeah. now I do it of it. And because like, it's, I, it's a game I'm playing and I want to see if I can, you know, get to level a hundred, you know what I mean? And it's, yeah. it's addicting. I don't care whether or not, you know, I make it, obviously I'm going to do everything in my power to get there, but I've already won. Dude, the, um, this game we're playing, just the fact that we get to play it, we've already won. Yeah. We're not, we're not stuck at a desk job, like hating what we're doing all day. That might be the first step to get there but like i feel a lot like i have not made it whatsoever but the fact that i get to chase it every day makes me so happy that i've already yeah. won yeah and, and you know I mean? the the video game like aspect is ever since i thought about it that way it's kind of made it a lot more enjoyable like over the past couple of years i started thinking oh, wow. of, it, of like you know i like in a video game, you're not going to get from level one to a hundred in, in like a day, you know, it's the same way where you have to think about every little stage is a different level. And all you have to really think about is how can I get from here to there? Not from here to there, but from here mm -hmm. to there. And then like, you know, however long that, that takes you, once you get there, like there looks easy, as you were saying, saying before, and you just kind of inch yourself along the line and, and there's some quote i think it's bill gates um a lot of people overestimate what you do in a year but they underestimate what you can accomplish in 10 years which is super true like music takes a long ass time to develop it's just the nature of kind of developing a fan base and developing a sound and and everything like that but if you stick with it because you enjoy it you know in a year you might not reach your dreams you'll make progress though and over the course of five, six, ten, whatever, how many years it takes, you can make a lot of ground, whether that's music or whether that's your a business or whether that's whatever job you're working. You know, it's kind of the same with, with yeah. everything in life. And um, that's why I've tracked so many metrics. Like, I'm kind of known as the nerd guy who puts everything in an Excel spreadsheet. I do that because that lets me um, see. But, yeah, that, that lets me see how I'm doing. That's it, like your scorecard. Exactly. It's it's literally if. Like people don't understand if you can sit there and you can learn the Facebook ad game and you can figure out how do I take this audience and make it like and build it enough to where I can monetize it. If you can do that, you've literally made a music career. Right. Like that's crazy, dude. Like people, like people don't realize like that's so, that's so like, that's such a powerful tool that like, like is that's why I loved your channel so much is because like it really opened my eyes like I'm going hard on TikTok dude like like I'm sure a lot of people are starting to realize how powerful it is like I've only yeah. been on it for a couple months and I'm getting about a hundred thousand views a month right now right. and I look at that and I'm like dude well on top of that if I can take you know an hour out of my day put you know five to twenty bucks a day on ads and just practice every day learning this system and i can have that running automated in the background that oh, gives yeah. me all this free time to focus on tiktok and i'm driving all this traffic to my streaming like i'm seeing like my fan base grow and like, like anyone can do this it's just you got to put in the work 
You know what I mean? Yeah, and I, so this will be the first time I ever announced this on a video, but I just got access to the TikTok ads platform. Um, so they yeah. finally opened it up <laughs> to people who were, like before it was like only for spending 10 grand a month or something. You had to be a top tier mm -hmm. advertiser. And just like Facebook, you know, that's kind of how it all started. They're opening it up to beta testers and you still have to have a certain ad spend, um, but I spend a good amount on, on ads. Um, not, a, not like 10 grand or anything, but, you know, enough for them to let me into the beta. And I haven't jumped into it yet, but I just got the access. And um, I think that it's going to be uh, it's going to be awesome just because every new ad platform is, is always nuts. And TikTok, it's a whole new world. Like in terms of organic content, it's just like none of the rules I mean, that apply on youtube apply on tiktok and so it's gonna be fun yeah i'd say one thing that like i think is people are still like really now starting to realize you know like how amazing tiktok is but what's happening is people aren't valuing the views that they're getting on tiktok the same they would on a youtube video if right. i was getting a hundred thousand views a month on youtube right now i'd be freaking out <laughs> but in reality if you think yeah. about it what's the difference it's someone finding out about you with the opportunity to hear your music and become a fan. Yeah, and, and, and just to provide like a little bit of context, so I just pulled up my YouTube analytics. So you're getting 100,000 monthly views on your TikTok, which only has, uh, well, I mean, I don't want to say only, but you have about 1,500. Like 100, I have like 1,400 followers. So I get, like that's uh, I get 106,000 views a month on YouTube on a channel that has 16,000 subscribers. So that's kind of the mm -hmm. power of, TikTok, where like even if you don't have a huge audience, you still have this kind of like explosive reach. And well, like even right now, right? Like I'm at like you know I've been sitting at you know between 800 and 1400 followers. Like it's gone up like that over the last you know month or so. And during that time, pretty much every single video I've been putting out gets 600 views, right? right? <laughs> videos aren't going viral at all but that's 600 views dude if i put out 10 videos a day that's 6,000 views right. that's 6,000 you know potential people finding out who i am and exactly. you can do things like series right like so one easy way to make content is like i do this series called starting five where i literally just pick an artist's top five songs i already love rap music i'm already diving into all these artists anyways <laughs> so i can come in here have people suggest it i'm building you know engagement with these followers but I can batch that content. I could make like, you know, seven to like, I, I can make a week's worth of those videos in about 30 to 40 minutes. Right. Because yeah. it's just the same. And I, I just, you know, have them on my draft folder. And it's really easy to post three times a day if you have two out of three of your pieces of content, like already ready to go. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. So, so, so when you, yeah. um, this is probably the perfect segue to dive into the world of TikTok. Um, oh God! When you, so when <laughs> when you first started in TikTok, like, did you get good results right away, or did it take you a while to know? Well, so I started back. I'm sure, like a lot of people, I'm not the only one that's heard, you know, Gary V screaming from the rooftops about you need to be on TikTok, right? Yeah. And then I'm sure, like a lot of us, we went on TikTok and we're like, what is this? Like, this is yeah. weird. You know, my first introduction to TikTok was seeing all their cringy ads. And I was like, I'm not going on there. Like, that looks like I want no part of that. But, you know, I, I got in it and I was really uncomfortable at first. Like, my first 10 to 15 videos, I was like, man, what am I doing? Yeah. But I just started to think about it. And what it took was seeing a, a couple other artists do not just well on the platform, but like, like, see that you can make content more than just cringy dance videos. You know what I mean? And I started, I started with just kind of, let's throw everything at the wall and see what sticks approach, right? So like pro tip right here, I don't think anyone's done this. I thought of this and it worked for me. I just went through my snap memories <laughs> and looked at all the videos I had on there. And there's a lot of like, I had this random video on there. I took like, like seven or eight months ago. And it was literally like this video of like a race car that was a Domino's delivery driver. And like, <laughs> I just posted it randomly, right? I'm just trying all this different stuff. And that video got like 165,000 views. Wow. And I have 200 followers. 
That's not happening on Instagram, dude. No, That's I mean, like, ever- the, the nice thing about TikTok in particular is that a lot of the content that can do well is, like, often very, like, stupidly easy to make. And, like, like for example, I, I'm not too yeah. big on TikTok yet. I've been trying to get more and more into it um, per per you and, and a few other people's advice. Yeah. Um, but, like, a while back, a few months ago, my, my best video, which only got, like, you know, 10 or 12,000 views... I was watching South Park and you know, the, mm-hmm. the thing with the, the, what is it called? The, the shake weight yeah. episode. And I just took, I got my phone and I screen, rec- I just took a little recording of like 15 seconds. And then I put one of those clips of audio where it was like a woman, like s- laughing to tears. So it just like yeah. laughing and stuff. And like, it just got 12,000 views and it gained me like, I don't know, like 80 followers or something. And it just kind of like, you know, it's not necessarily good for, for branding on purposes, but yeah. it kind of shows that you don't really need to put in much effort. You just kind of need something that will. It's consistency. It's what? It's, it's being, it's really what it comes down to is just being consistent, just holding yourself to a standard. I post three to five times a day. Yeah. And even if you, don't know what to do and it's as simple as you do edit video dude i've literally <laughs> do edit videos just being like wow this person's really talented and people have commented on the video thank you and then followed me that aren't that person that's nuts because i'm just <laughs> curating good content for them and then they're like oh who's this guy you know okay he's duetting this video of this dude but what's his deal you know what i mean right, and then right. they can go and scroll and see my content and see you know i make actually good content in my humble opinion. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, your, your, your content, yeah, like, well, I, it, I can make, sometimes I just try to make myself laugh on the app because like, <laughs> you just can't take it too seriously. Like, because it, it, it's still something I'm toying around with, right? Like my videos, most of them don't even go viral, but like I said, like, even if they're just getting 600 views a video, I'm posting enough. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah. Like it up over time. And then, you, you start to get like these super fans. It's weird. Like I get the same like 10 people that just interact with all my content. And so what I do is I'll, I'll go on those people and the people that interact with me, I'll go hit them up on Instagram and just, you know, start to befriend them and like try to become their friend. And all of a sudden you got a fan, you know what I mean? Right. Right. Yeah. It's, it's nuts, man. Like I, I, I feel like the reason why I've been struggling with it in particular is because I was thinking of it like YouTube at first. And Mm -hmm. when I first jumped on, like my first experience was like, Oh, it's a music based platform. I'm going to put on some clips of my music. No, (laughs) that's not work. (laughs) Um, And then I, I started doing some stupid, silly videos and like, they would do okay. But like the moral of the story is that they pretty much always, no matter what, and this is sitting me at like 150 followers or whatever, they pretty much always get, 100 to th- to 400 views depending on yeah. the video and as you said if you do a handful of those a day over the course of a week that's thousands of views and if you convert 10 percent of those viewers to followers that's you know over the course of a year that's thousands of followers and then all it takes is one video to hit that ridiculous tiktok algorithm and it is really the- don't expect yeah it's- mine was a you dude it was a, it was a snap memory six months before I posted it. I was just like, Oh, let's see how this goes. And it literally got like 165,000. So you know what I did? I took that same video and I reposted it with my music in the background. (laughs) And it got like, it didn't do nearly as good, but it still got like, you know, like, I think it's probably at like four or 5,000 views or something. I haven't really checked it, but that's still like, that's still a couple thousand people that could learn about my music. Yeah. And I, I think I told you this, this story before, but one day I was perusing on the, the Spotify charts, the Spotify vi- worldwide viral charts. And there was this random guy at number one. I click on his profile and he's number one in the world for virality on Spotify. It's his first song ever. And it came out the, like the day before. And so I'm <laughs> like, what is what is going on? Like he didn't even have a, a banner picture. He didn't have a profile or anything. So I search his name on Google. I come across an Instagram page. I see he has a TikTok link there. I check his TikTok and he has like a hundred thousand plus or more, a couple hundred thousand followers. And what he did is before the song comes out, he's hyping people up about the song. His launch day comes and he's just like, please everyone, if you've ever liked any of my content, go to the link in my bio, 
and just stream the song and add it to your playlist. And apparently yeah. he convinced tens of thousands of people to do that. And it just like shot off like a rocket in the Spotify algorithm to be number one global viral for this rant. And he was like yeah. 16. So it was, it was nuts. Well, that's what's crazy, right? Is if you get picked up in these algorithms, like it just takes one piece of content and it's game over. It takes yeah. one viral video on TikTok making your song get enough exposure that it gets picked up in the Spotify algorithm and you could have just literally overnight created a music career. And I'm not saying that's <laughs> going to happen for most people, but what if you get a one one hundredth of that and you do that on each song and you build up more and more momentum and between your consistency on TikTok and your consistency with Facebook ads, like you, li we're literally building a machine, right? Like the way, yeah. the way I view like the strategy I'm really trying to implement right now is like, all right, from before I've even made the song until a month after I've released it, I want to know what I'm doing each step of the way. Like, all right, I make this song with this goal and then I make these pieces of content for that song. And then I run these ads on that song while having this TikTok content strategy mm. and then we launch it. And then let's see how it does, right? And you're doing that at least once a month with the song and then you get all this data back from it, like what in this process worked and what didn't. And then you cut the fat and you do that again with the next song, which right. you now have a larger audience because of the promotion from that song. And like the way I see it, it's like as long as you do that consistently and with as much effort as you can and like tr just trying your best and then really looking at the data and sit, figuring out what you're doing wrong and changing like that. Like it just, it's just math. Like it's going to work eventually. You know what I mean? Like yeah. if you get enough exposure and your music is quality, like you are going to get fans. And if you foster those relationships with those fans, like you're going to be able to at least get to the point where you can live off your music. You know what I mean? Right. And, and depending on like where you are in the world or what kind of style of living you have, like that doesn't have to be a whole lot either. And you know, everyone lives differently and everyone lives in different states and countries. But like, for example, if someone's living in like, I don't want to like name drop a country. Let's I don't know. Let's just say Brazil or something. It's probably che much cheaper to live in Brazil than it is to live in the United States, and particularly if you live in like New York City. Right. So for the person in Brazil or wherever to make a living off of music, like maybe 300,000 streams a month gives them enough to literally go mm -hmm. full time as a musician. And that's that's when you start thinking about something like that, that's not that unattainable. Like, I don't consider myself a like, like, like super successful musician, like, but I get 70,000 streams a month. So I'm 20 percent to that threshold. And if you know, I to me, that's not enough. But for a lot of people, that's just like, whoa, like I can do this full time. And it's. I mean, I think the piece of the equation that people don't talk about enough is having financial literacy because that's the yeah. boring part, right? right? People don't want to sit there and crunch their numbers. But in reality, I guarantee you, like there's so many areas where you're wasting money and that money is time that you could be spending on your music or that's, that's time that you don't have to spend working that can free you to be able to do music, right? So like something as simple as like, you know, cutting all your debt and investing $10 a day into an IRA. Like if, if yeah. you see, if like Google compound growth calculator and look at the average return from investing $10 a day into your IRA, you can basically guarantee you retire comfortably from $10 a day. I guarantee yeah. you there's somewhere in your life you're wasting $10. You're getting Starbucks instead of making coffee at home. You're eating out five times a week instead of eating out once a week, right? And if you yeah. can just find those areas to tweak and you just are smart with your money which is like a couple books i recommend is like um the automatic millionaire is a good one i would teach you to be rich is a really good one um dave ramsey's got a lot of good stuff but if you go and research these guys and learn to actually really handle your money i know realistically that i can live off of two thousand dollars a month and retire with over a million dollars in my in my net worth hmm just from compound growth and managing my money with a proper budget. So now that I know that, that means I can live off of $2,000 a month. Well, that means obtaining my goal of being a musician becomes so much easier because right. I just have to make over 2000 a month. Well, that's if you're making $10 a ticket and $10 from merch, that's doing one show 
where you sell, you know, I do the math, right? That's like 20 tickets right. or tw 200 tickets or like 100 tickets. And I, I'm my math's off, but you get what I'm saying. That's not that much money. Yeah. And, and like a, a lot of people dreaming. have dreams of this like superstar life, which like, yeah, there's, you know, that can happen. But there's a lot of musicians who have audiences of only a couple thousand, but they can monetize that audience to be a full time musician. And then and then it's really just a matter of, you know, scaling and finding what you're comfortable with. Like for some people, they're they hear like two thousand dollars a month and they're like, no way like i'm i need my starbucks i need my my tesla whatever um and but like if you think about that that's kind of like for you that might be like okay this is the point where i can do it full time or for whoever for some people might say okay that's the point where i can go part-time that's a huge mm -hmm. milestone or it might be more that this is the first this is the time when i realize like i can dedicate myself to this with a lot more like conviction and passion because that's kind of a huge milestone even right. once you hit a thousand dollars a month that's it's a big deal and it's not that far off even just in spotify alone but it's even less far off if you're selling like a t-shirt for 20 bucks and you can convince 100 people to buy it so yeah well, well think about this like chasing this you know dream of becoming a successful musician what people think is you being you know the top tier making millions of dollars. Well, what really like, dude, I promise you, I work from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m., six to seven days a week. And what I haven't always been like that, what lit a fire under me to have that type of work ethic is I was once I realized that I can accomplish my dream making $2,000 a month. Now that seems real, dude. That seems so real. That seems yeah. so obtainable. It's right. still outside my of where I'm at right now, but that seems real to me. So the fact that I think I can do that means I'm going to put in the work. Whereas, you know, someone, they may want the million, but they don't necessarily believe they're going to get there. Yeah. So that doesn't mean they're, you're not going to put in the work to get something if you don't believe you're going to get it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like, obviously once I hit that 2000, like I'm going to set the next, next benchmark. But like I would, I would challenge people to ask like, why are you doing music? Like, are you doing this to impress people? Or are you doing this because it's what you love? And if it's really what you love, like you can do this and make a decent living if you're just smart about what you're doing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and just be smart with your money. Like, have a strategy. Take the data from that strategy and adjust. And like, it just gets easier over time. Those those levels you think were impossible to beat, like. You know, like I'm living proof. Like I, I, I literally could like, I would kill to get a show in front of 10 people when I started. Yeah. Like that was, that was my dream. That was me winning. And then walking off stage and after performing in front of 6,000 people, it was like a little Xbox icon was above <laughs> my head and it's like achievement unlocked. And it's like, once I beat that level, it made me realize it's like, dude, you can beat any of these levels. It's just, do you have the patience to stick it through? And are you really giving it everything you have? And then those opportunities will come as long as, you know, you keep at it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and something you said earlier that I, I forgot about, but just remembered, uh, you're mentioning like people can save up a pretty good retirement fund with just $10 a day due to interest. Um, I, I often have said to people who, you know, they, they might see one of my Facebook ad videos and they're like, well, that's great, but I can't afford to spend uh, $10 a day in ads or $5 a day in ads. And the way that I paid for my ads when I started, Originally, the first time I dabbled in Facebook ads, I was working in Starbucks. Like I wasn't, I didn't have all this money to blow. You know, that's not necessarily like, I, I, and I was a student. So when I, the way I justified it was, okay, well, instead of buying coffee, I mean, while I worked, I got free coffee, but instead of buying coffee or going out to eat, every time I don't do one of those things, that's my marketing budget for the week. And then when I started working uh, as, as an engineer, I was getting coffee every morning and I was mm -hmm. getting, uh, buying lunch at work. And so I would think, okay, well, if I skip my coffee this morning, that's $5 a day I can spend the ads. If I skip, if I bring lunch to work, I'm not skip the coffee, make it at home. I can't live without the coffee. Um, if I, <laughs> if I bring the lunch from home, uh, that's another $10 a day that I saved and I can spend the ads. And if you think about mm -hmm. it that way, your ad spend isn't actually costing you a damn penny. And because mm -hmm. for a lot of people, you know, they they're living off of like paycheck to paycheck. 
They genuinely mm-hmm. probably can't afford to do ten dollars a month out of their pocket. So, but you're I mean, you're so like, right that almost get, everyone is wasting I money. I understand people are struggling, but if you want to make this work, you can figure that out. Yeah, you can find five a day. If it means getting up an hour earlier and working for an extra hour, if it means selling something, if it means camps, canceling your Netflix subscription and spend it instead of spending two hours at the end of your day watching Netflix, like like if you really want this, this isn't easy, dude. Like you have to sacrifice and you can figure that out, whether that is figuring out where you need to cut the fat, whether that's moving back home with your parents, there is a way you can find five to ten dollars a day. And I'm sorry, if you can't figure that out, then you're not gonna make it. Dude. Like you just aren't. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Just, real, dude. Like if you can't five if you can't find ten dollars a day whether that means selling your stuff, whether that means working overtime, whether that means getting the coffee at home, whether that means making food yourself, like you can figure that out. That's not that hard of a challenge. If you can't solve that, like how are you going to solve getting to that top level that everyone's trying to reach? You know what I mean? hundred percent. Like I, I think I was, like, I was talking I, to, to, you can Ruslan. make excuses or you can figure it out. You know what I mean? Yeah, when I was talking to Ruslan, he said something similar. He was just like, well, you know, if you don't have the, the money, like, you'll figure that out. If you really want this enough, yeah. you'll just you'll figure it out. Like, there's there's a million and a half ways to to make some extra cash on on a dime, whether that's doing a yard sale, as you, you know, or selling I'm stuff or whatever. Uber delivery driver right now, and I can make over $200 in a day doing that. You can do that with a $2,000 beater up car and getting you know the job like you like i'm not sitting here trying to pretend like i've made it in any way but like i said like i've gotten enough success i've tasted it enough to know you can do this and it's just like how bad do you want it and what are you willing to sacrifice to get there you know what i mean yeah, yeah. like but it's real dude it really is like like i didn't <laughs> think it was real and then i played a show in front of you know i opened up for artists that like like I never thought I would be there. You know what I mean? And like, even though they have no idea who I am, just the fact that I can say I did that makes me so happy that I want to wake up tomorrow at six and see what else I can do. Oh yeah. And just the seeing how far I can push it. I'm not worried about what people think of me. I'm not worried about being rich. Like, obviously I'm going to figure out how to push this to a point where I don't have to work a job I don't want and I can do music all day. But like, I'm telling you just like, I wake up happy, man, because I'm doing what I love. And if you can fall in love with that instead of worrying about the results, like that's going to give you the energy to put in the work and have the proper habits that will compound over a long enough time frame to give you that result. You know what I mean? I I think this is going to end up being an Instagram uh, short clip that I cut out. (laughs) Put that up story <laughs> yeah yeah every time I, I try to pull out a um like with tom dupree i pulled out his thing about how he he was he was signed to a record label and he mm-hmm. was working at was it outback or is that someone else no that was someone else he was he was working as a waiter or something and his boss was like oh like i really hope your dreams come true and that you get signed and that you become a professional musician he said he was just like hands like head in his hands just like i do have a record label i'm a signed artist um, yeah. and that was the, the soundbite. And I think this section is going to be that, but, um, <laughs> yeah, man, I, I think just the one thing that like, I want people to understand is like, if this is really what you love, like there's going to be hard times and there's going to be good times, but like it, like what really changed everything for me was when I changed why I was doing this. You know what I mean? Like, cause you can do this for the accolades. That's a good way to end up depressed. And you see artists that make it, dude. There's a lot of artists that end up getting really depressed once they make it because it wasn't what they thought it was. And what's going to happen if you're chasing it for materialistic reasons is you're going to get it and you're going to be miserable because it's not going to fill that void inside. And that's what happened to me, dude. I I ran, like we never really got into it, but before I was doing this, I was running my own e-commerce brand. I was able to build that up to a six figure brand. But what happened when I got that success was I was miserable because I wasn't, I was doing it to impress people. And they don't care, dude. No one cares. Yeah, so I care. got it and I sacrificed all this stuff to, you know, impress other people to in the thought that it would, you know, fill the void I had of my own insecurity. 
And when I realized that it's like, no, nah, man, I need to do what I love because I love it. And I'm going to chase and see how far I can push it. And just the act of doing that is, is being successful. Like yeah. success is the constant pursuit of a worthy idea. You know what I mean? It's not any, it's not these accolades. It's not, I got a million streams because no one cares, dude. <laughs> no one gives a shit. And if they, if they really are acting like they, you know, care a lot of times it's because they want something from you. And that's not, that's not from a place of like, I'm not trying to be like a Debbie down or anything. I'm just saying like, dude, like, I, I'm sure you, you have so much going on in your life. You're not worried about what Jennifer from high school is doing. <laughs> Absolutely you know I mean? not. Yeah. Well, Jennifer's sitting over here stressing about getting the perfect angle on her profile pic because she's wondering what people are going to think of it. No one cares, dude. They're worried about paying their bills. They're worried about chasing their own success. They're worried about, you know, their grandma that's sick. They're not worried about your, you. So stop worrying about what they think and go do what you love because you love it. And when you fall in love with that process, not worrying about the result, but the process of chasing it, like it fills me with so much fucking like just motivation and happiness that like i know i've already won before i've even made it you yeah know what i mean i think that's another um i'm gonna have to tag gary v in this or something that's another, <laughs> another thing he says all his dude, a lot of principles from what he said i've been listening to him yeah. since 2013 dude and i didn't take a lot of it to heart until i went through having um, my business collapse on me and, you know, I was running a six figure business. It was stroking the crap out of my ego. And when that fell apart on me, I had to really, it really stripped everything down. And I had to look at what is true. You know, like yeah. what is, what are my fundamental truths, which is I love making music. I love stretching my limits. And that feeling I get after walking off stage, I want to feel that again. Yeah. And, and so I just was there, you know what I mean? And just chasing those things because I loved them. Like that became what was successful for me. Just the idea that I can have them in my life, like brings me so much joy. And I know that, you know, it might take 10 years for me to make $2,000. It might take me 10 months. I have no idea. But the, I know that like, as long as I keep getting my name out there, as long as I keep doing podcasts, as long as I keep putting out TikTok content, as long as I keep investing in Facebook ads and I keep looking at the data, figuring out what's working, adjusting and doing like a single release each month and just watching that compound, like it is going to work. Like mark my words, like I will be able to live off my music. Like it's just math. It's inevitable. Yeah. And, and what you said earlier about, you know, doing it, doing it because you you love it. Like the, when I think about, for example, like the amount of income I get from like YouTube AdSense, or if I think about how many sales I'm getting from the, the products I sell or the course that I'm launching, or I think about the revenue I get from my Patreon, it's, I don't think about like, ooh, I'm gonna make all this money this year. I'm thinking like, this gives me a pool of money that I can use to expand everything I'm doing. And I I don't know when this like happened, but there was kind of a switch at some point where I realized like, I like doing this and I want to be able to help as many artists as I can with the platform that I have. And you need money to build anything. And so that's the only reason why I ever launched like a new product. It's like, well, I want to go do this, but I don't want to pay for it myself. So I'm going to go figure out how to generate that money and then go do that. It's, it's because of like a, a, a passion for wanting to do it, not to like, you know, stroke my own horn. Is that even a saying? Stroke well, your own horn? <laughs> <laughs> do your own horn. Do your own horn. Yeah, don't stroke your own horn. Jesus. But, but yeah, man, I think that's the game, right? Like, and I think, you know, when you start to, you know, when you push past that threshold where you start to get results and you reach that point where you realize it's possible, it like opens up this whole new per like world because you realize like, wow, like I didn't think this was possible and then I achieved it. So what else do I not think is possible? And like, can I achieve that too? And you just slowly start, you know, knocking them off. Like when I opened up for Joiner, I signed my first autograph, check that off the list, right? Like I hit up some dude on, you know, Instagram, got on my local radio station, got to play my music on the radio, check that off the list. Got to open up for, you know, big artists, check that off the list. And you just start going down the list. And it's like, I think, you know, one thing, you know, I, I don't think we touched on this is really important is like making sure you know where you're going to, yeah. you know what I mean? 
like I, I, I talk to a lot of artists and like they haven't, they don't know where they're trying to go. They're like, oh yeah, I want to be, you know, rich and famous and make a lot of money for my music. But it's like, all right, well, if I, if I told you, hey, like meet me at Starbucks, like, okay, you're in Arizona, I'm in Portland, like where, which Starbucks, when, why are we meeting? Like you need to be the same about your goals. Like for example, for mm -hmm. me, I want to make $2,000 a month from a combination of my streaming, my merch and my shows because I know based off of my current budget and my current investment goals that I can hit them making $2,000 a month. Right. How am I going to do that? I'm going to run Facebook ads. I'm going to go really hard on TikTok. I'm going to plug them all to my Spotify. I'm going to get that data, use it to retarget my ads, to sell them merch and sell them tickets to my shows. And I'm going to repeat that process one single after another. Like that's a game plan. Like yeah. it's just like, Hey, all right, if we're going to be at the target, you know, Starbucks on fifth, well, all right, take the left on third street. You know, you know what I mean? Like, it's just like, you need to know as specifically as possible where you're trying to go and more importantly, why you're trying to go there. And if you can figure those out, like you'll fill in the dots. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and that's, I mentioned this earlier, but like, that's why I'm so obsessive over all the data. Like I, I have a spreadsheet that I call the Spotify income calculator. Um, and it's just, I, I, I Dude, I need that in my life. Yeah, it's and all it is is just like I, I got like a bunch of no streaming numbers like, you know, 10,000, 25,000, 50, 100, uh, 350, 500, a million, 1.5 million. And I just got the, the estimated like rough value per stream you make yeah. at Spotify and just multiply it out, figure out monthly cost per those streams per month and then yearly income per those streams. And what what you find is that you get a you get essentially a roadmap of all these goals so for me first the first kind of landmark is to be able to generate um it's not the first one it's like i i have it segmented like all these little goals and then there's one highlighted then all these little goals and there's one highlighted the first one mm -hmm. is three hundred and fifty thousand monthly streams on spotify because that's federal minimum wage in the united states it's just a cool number Dude, to that's say like, that's crazy and the next one is 1.5 million streams which is the base uh, mechanical engineering salary out of college which is like you know roughly what i got out of school so to me it's just sets a clear goal like you know right now i you know a month ago i was at like 30,000 monthly streams and then i've worked very hard over the last month put out some songs marketed them and i'm at that 70,000 monthly stream limit mm -hmm. the next goal is 100 and then it's 150 and then it's 250 and then it's 350 and a lot of artists are just they they their goal is mm, you know it's it's like they have no goal at all and and your goal is even better than mine because it's very very specific and it's like all encompassing mine is always like in this platform i want this in this platform i have this roadmap and in this platform i have this roadmap but well i have those too even better yeah you know i mean <laughs> You're killing it. You, you're putting this overall machine. Right? I, I think, you know, as artists, you know, we love the art part, but we forget that if we want to make money, we got to be running a business. And, you know, back when I was running my e-commerce brand, you know, I was going to these conferences and I got to meet like, you know, seven figure business owners and I got to, you know, network and talk with them. I'm, I'm like, how are you doing this? And they're like, what it really comes down to is two things. It's having a system and a team to implement that system, right? Right now we're in the system process. Yeah. Right? We gotta build out this system. We gotta know exactly what we're doing. You know, you gotta know what your plan is, right? And you know, like I said, for me, what that plan is, is releasing a single a month, you know, doing a pre-release campaign, a post-release campaign, building up my TikTok following to promote it while simultaneously running Facebook ads, right? That's putting me in a position where I know that I'm gonna build my Spotify audience no matter what I do on TikTok, because I have those ads. Right. Yeah. I can sit there an hour in the morning, just tweak them. I'm learning what to do more than I am tweaking them right now. Um, but I know that, you know, as I split test and as I optimize and as I figure out who my audience is and as my audience grows, it'll become easier. Just yeah. like as I figured out that talking to promoters can get me shows made it easier than talking to venue, right? Like you just learn those little things over time and then you encompass them into your overall strategy. And then as you build up more momentum, you build up more leverage. And then I can go on something like a, you know, like a call like this. And like I said, like, I'm not going to sit here and try and pretend like I've made it, but I've had enough that I can leverage it. Like at least enough to leverage. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. And anyone can do that and just start with people, you know, that you think you can leverage with. And like, as long as you have a plan and like you keep tweaking it, like you'll figure it out. You know what I mean? It's just, you just gotta keep at it. 